Hello, we're on with uh, David, the founder of Proof of Beauty. How are you doing today, David? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Thank you for joining me. Uh, right behind me, I have one of these beautiful Proof of Beauties that I minted back in the day. I guess this was in January, could be right? Yeah, Genesis, January, February, March, I remember, yeah. Um, I got pretty excited about it. Um, this this one right here is Mark Cuban's first transaction. You know, <laughs> is it going to be worth a lot of money one day? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but certainly Mark Cuban is jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing this one being minted uh, way back. And I was like, that's a... I, that, that was one of the first few celebrity history being collected. Though. So that was very exciting. Happy to have you as owner of it and, and par- owning that part of history. <laughs> back then, back then it was uh, Mark w- was Mark. He's my buddy, yeah. you know, Mark, you know, he was, <laughs> he was just getting into, uh, uh, into crypto those days. And it was like mm. really exciting. I, I think for most of crypto, especially for me when he started, you know, buying like sushi and all this, you know, just using Aave and doing all these things. So I got pretty excited and I saw that his first transaction was still available for purchase. <laughs> Maybe tell, tell us uh, a bit about how the mechanics work, at least for this first one, you have a new one, but um, basically yeah. you could only mint one transaction. You couldn't mint it again. So I mean, yeah. 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 Um... I guess just to kind of clarify, this project you're referring to is called Hash. Uh, we're not very creative with our names at Proof of Beauty Studios, so we just called it Hash because it's about collecting history um, in the form of NFTs. And then what's the most fundamental unit of history on the blockchain? It's a transaction, right? And then we you know, refer to a specific transaction by the transaction Hash. Uh, so what Hash does is takes a transaction hash we then you know use that and go on the blockchain fetch all that data we can fetch right like who was sent it was it mark cuban who like who was receiving it uh what was what was happening in the transaction uh you know um what's the gas price all that information and we actually use that to generate this artwork so uh, high gas price will do this. Uh, uh, you know, Mark Cuban sent it, so this color will come out, right? So, it's like a it's a way of uh, creating digital memorabilia, like mementos, um, way to artistically interpret um, what is very rich crypto history, right? So, um, ho- hopefully, that captures what hash is. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I was describing NFTs to someone and there's two types of NFTs. There's these generative NFTs, and then there's just images. I don't know how to describe the second category, but here it's like the transaction itself is what creates the art as opposed to yep. just putting a, a picture of, you know, onto the chain. The chain is the mm-hmm. one that's giving you the picture, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well put. <laughs> so, um, Let's uh let's back up a little bit. How'd you get into crypto? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 2021, so I got in during the 2017 ICO bubble. Um, you know, I was I was in college. Um, we were all screwing around with with like random coin, like Coinbase. So I bought Litecoin at the time. Made some good money, and you know, uh, making good money usually is a good motivator to pursue whatever you were making money. So um, eventually uh, read the Bitcoin white paper and, and that really bit the bullet for me. And I read the Ethereum white paper subsequently and, and I knew that I wanted to work in crypto um, at that time. And, and um, so I was very fortunate to join Xerox protocol um, um, before and, and that's like a DeFi protocol and uh, it trades you know assets uh, the there's a great it's a dex um in the very traditional sense um and i worked there for a few years um, um and eventually I, I i mean uh i always loved crypto kitties i always loved um uh, you know uh, all the og projects that we're seeing kind of 
revive itself, moon cats, all those things. Um, so I was just like, I gotta, you know, with the, with the whole NFT boom recently, it was like, I gotta give it one more try. I gotta, I, I gotta make my own effort in the NFT space. So, you know, outside of work, I, I, I built Proof of Beauty Studios and, you know, fortunately it soon became my full time. And then uh, I left Zero X to pursue a career in NFTs. Um, and haven't looked back since. <laughs> So you left Zero X pretty recently then, Could have, must have been at the yeah. beginning of the year. Yeah, I left in mid-March, so it's been about half a year since I've departed. Um, nice, very Zero cool. X. <laughs> and um, you're an engineer? Yes, yes, I come from an engineering background. I went to school for that, I, I was hired, I was paid most of my life for that. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Zero X is an interesting project, super old, been around forever. Mm -hmm. The I think that most people, especially if you're coming into crypto right now, you wouldn't recognize it necessarily, but it still powers a lot of the back end of a lot of the transactions that are happening on chain, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and obviously, I think a lot of people are aware of Uniswap, of, uh, of SushiSwap, all these other uh, AMMs, but uh, uh, Zero X, I think, is very competitive still uh, as a DEX. It, it has a great front end product called Matra.xyz. You can use it and I, why I'm going to endlessly shill it is because I worked on that um, for quite a while and I'm very proud of it. And it's a very great product that, you know, fetches the best prices from all of the DEXs. So it's kind of a, you know, a DEX aggregator as, as, as we call it. Um, yeah, I, I think Xerox is like kind of like quiet as a protocol, but I think um, you won't. It wouldn't be surprised if you're actually interfacing with Xerox quite often. Um, you just may not be aware of it um, um, as a regular user, um, and that's kind of I think the Xerox objective with, with with its protocol design and, and blah blah blah. Speaking of matcha, that's probably one of the nicest the apps to look at. <laughs> in all yeah. of crypto i mean it's it's designed very well and i think a lot of people look 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 to it for design ideas yeah yeah uh i think we had a very 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 talented designer product designer on the team um i was very fortunate to work with uh some very talented engineers that i've learned so much from but I, it was a very crack team and and, and um because um the Xerox protocol was so mature and, and there was another team kind of very focused on the other challenges of, of building a DEX. We were just allowed to focus on building a very great user experience, right? So that meant a lot of attention to care to just how do we build these things? How do we, you know, communicate very complex, you know, uh, DEX ideas and concepts. So um, very proud to be part of that team. And, and I, did my small part in, in hoping to make matcha as good as it can be um, during my brief tenure at that team. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so give me the beginning stages of Proof of Beauty. What, what, what was the idea, what was the motivation at the very beginning? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, this would have to go back to about 2018. Um, at the time, I, you know, I was doing generative art for fun. Um, that was just kind of like a side thing, a hobby of mine. And, and I, at the time I remember seeing crypto art, the, the one with the, like a mosaic of, 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 of like generative, um, art, uh, that, that represents a block. I remember seeing that way back and I really thought there was an opportunity to, to create interesting and thoughtful, um, artistic crypto experiences uh, uh, with generative art, with thoughtful crypto design. Um, and I thought that you marry these two, you can create some very cool stuff that people would appreciate. Um, that was kind of the vision I had in 2018. Um, but, you know, it took me a few years of just marinating on the idea to eventually finally pull the trigger and, and say, I got to build something and just not leave this in the brain. And, you know, so uh, about September of last year, I started to 
build what is today hash. Um, I started uh, building the generative art, building all the pipelines, the contracts. It took me about three months, four months to 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 actually build and release it. And, and in mid January, I uh, kind of released it to the public, and and it was very well received. I think um, in March, and and that really allowed me to say, okay, this is not just a side project. Now I can go full time and, and really look back to my 2018 vision of just creating a studio that um, isn't strictly financially motivated, um, that that has the freedom, the capacity, the, the vision to find ways to use blockchain as part of the art, right? Not just a way to distribute the art. Um, and I really think that hash and, and now London both kind of are emblematic of that uh, um, effort as a studio to really push what the blockchain can do culturally. So what's the, um, you call it Proof of Beauty Studio. What is the studio? What is that? Yeah, yeah. It's honestly like... Um, the best way I've, I've told people is just, it, it's 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 a basic legal entity that allows me to do what I do <laughs> for a living. Um, allows me to you know pay for services, hire folks. You know, it's that's really all it is. It's it's just you know I have uh, you know a, a good comrade in arms that works with the studio that we build things together. Um, it's a way for it's it's really just a legal entity that houses all these projects um and that's really all i've kind of um all the weight i want to give it because because a lot of our work comes in the forms of DAOs that the studio has you know no special preferential treatment to gotcha so when you're building um hash you build the pipeline. So how does it work? Like well, what information are you giving to the computer that it yep. then can generate this art? Yeah, yeah. So I guess the most primitive thing that we're giving is the transaction hash, right? Um, you you know, you go on hash.pob.studio, excuse me. You put in a transaction hash, you found an ether scan or whatever, um, or, or you can click on Explorer page. It's a lot of already pre-collected um, moments of history even mint. Uh, once we have the hash, you know, we then go to the blockchain, take that, take all the transaction data we can get. And then we take all this transaction data and we convert this into something that we internally call a gene. Um, uh, inspired by how CryptoKitties work. It's a gene and, and so gas price, which is this abstract economic concept, gets translated into uh, color complexity to uh, texturing, right? So we take this information that is abstract and we convert it into something that is visually uh, uh, useful. And then we take this gene and then we feed it into this black box gen generative art system and, and it creates, you know, um, the artwork that you see on the website or, or on OpenSea and, and yeah. Nice. Hopefully, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> no, no, it no, makes sense. Um, so, what was the, what was kind of the, what was the mission here? What was the idea behind the first projects? Why did you go yeah. with this particular route? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I guess I can speak on the personal level and in the, and at the broader project level ambitions. Personally, about a year ago, year and a half ago, at this point. Um, I was just thinking, I was like, what if we made a coffee book, uh, but collecting ETH history? Um, and I was like, okay, so how do how would you do it, right? And, and I was like, okay, so I did some light research. Oh, how do we capture history, right? And 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 realized there was just not a lot of art. There was not a lot of culture built around the history. There was just a lot of Twitter threads. There was a lot of Etherscan links. Uh, there were certainly a lot of great blog posts, but it just they were written to communicate information. They weren't really written in a way that was, I think, uh, had spectacle, um, had narrative, uh, was meant for a, a more generalized audience. And and so I kind of saw this as a chicken and egg problem. Like, well, there's just not enough great content out there to, 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 to create a coffee book out of. So I was like, okay, how do we solve this in a crypto native way? And then it's like, wait, why don't we 
tokenized transaction history as as NFTs because that's a, that's what you know crypto is about, right? Is, is how do we uh, create scarcity um, in that form? And and so I created Hash um, as as a way to solve the problem of making the coffee book. Um, and now uh, uh, well, you know we're working on this coffee book. We're we're actively chatting with shops because now we have content. Now we have about 3000 hashes. We have titles and descriptions written. We have the historians writing verdict. There's like, we have all the content now, right? So we're kind of coming back to the original source of what, why hash existed. Um, but that's my personal ambition. Um, <laughs> and, and that's so cool. I didn't, I had no idea about <laughs> this, uh, the coffee book origins here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like, Oh, I want to do something crypto. It was, it was a very, just, I want a book. And then now we have a crypto thing. Um, but yeah, at, at a project level, um, um, the broader goal I think is to become the library of ETH. Um, and, and I keep on thinking back visually about like the library of Alexandria, right? Like these, this very rich, uh, um, just library of content, right? We have a nearly billions and trillions of transactions happening, you know, and every day there's more history being added. But, you know, we haven't beyond just human, beyond just the information that the transaction gives you, there's just hasn't been a great effort to document, to collect them beyond just Twitter threads that we see online. And so Hash presents a very unique opportunity to create a great incentive, a great community, a great way and in a very crypto native way to document and richly collect our history our moments both our best moments and our worst right hacks exploits but also uh maybe the first right mark cuban's transaction i think is a very big marker of the of, of this is the general um, reputation of the space um right and 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 so yeah and and this capacity to collect history i think it, in so in many weird ways, it's like hash is slowly becoming like a crypto native way to create a Wikipedia for history, transaction history, ETH history. Um, you know, you hop on our Discord, you see some very rich conversations about things. Um, I've learned so much myself about the little details about ETH history simply because somebody spent the hours digging through all these primary sources ether scan and and condensed it into an nft and they're like here it is i wrote a little description to kind of document what i've learned in my research uh we made archaeologists out of um passionate crypto um historians right um and i think that's i think especially a few years down the line extremely powerful to have this very rich uh, um, collection of effectively books on, on our history, right? Wow, that's incredible. I love that. <laughs> I love that. You got to take those uh, Discord, turn those into a Wikipedia article, like a IPFS Ether Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's more work to be done, but um, yeah, yeah. I think that's one of our broad goals is get these to stories told more, right? Um, Get more people listening. I think we need a bigger audience, but you know, um, the fact that there's good stories to tell um, is a very bullish sign to me. <laughs> I love it. So, do you have a affinity for coffee table books? I couldn't be honest. I don't know. It's just I was just thinking, like, what would be a great medium to tell you know, crypto history, like ETH history, right? It's very rich. I did a DeFi summer and yield farming and, and, you know, when Xerox was incepted and, you know, when, when Uniswap came out, right, out of you know, a freaking forum post that Vitalik wrote and, and Hayden Adams decided to make a prototype of it. It's like, there's so much stuff and it's like, we can't let this go go to waste. And I was like, what well, if we made a children's book? Well, how do we explain a, a automatic, like automated market maker to a kid, right? That doesn't seem very feasible. So I was like, okay, let's, let's see what other artistic medium and somehow it just coffee book made sense to me. I don't know why. Um, I didn't want to do a textbook because that sounded a little too, you know, uh, boring. And, and I know that there were already you know, writers that were writing, um, I guess, non-fictions like um, Camila Russo with her book, um, so I was like, what's a more visual medium, right? And then coffee book somehow was the one. Um, 
Love that. Very cool. I also had an idea for a coffee table book, but it's definitely not as grand as yours. I don't know if I should say it. <laughs> I mean, like, if you want to help out, we're more than happy to kind of get some more help on the book. <laughs> no, no, I had an idea for a different for a different coffee oh, table book. Got it. Got okay, it. <laughs> I'll I'll just say it because I already brought it up. I was on a road trip. And I walked into many different bathrooms on the way. Mm -hmm. It would just be like bathrooms of America. Just, just a picture, you know, <laughs> location. You know, you flip through that. There's, there's a, there's a uh, Twitter, this is such a tangent, but there's a Twitter that I used to follow. It was like terrifying toilets or something. And it's just like pictures of very horrifying yeah. <laughs> bathroom stalls. It's like the lighting or the whatever the grime and just like you did so i don't know why absolutely. i was following this twitter but <laughs> that reminds me of that <laughs> absolutely uh the front would be you know worst toilets the back would be best toilets then you that <laughs> yeah the back is like all the airbnb worthy stuff <laughs> uh, so anyway so then we uh by the way is the is hash still mintable or is that closed that's a great question. Um, we, we, we approach hash with seasonality. Um, so you can think of it as like fashion seasons or, or, or generations, I guess, is the more NFT technical term. Um, so the Genesis was season zero. Um, that's already sold out. So the only way to get it, you know, like what you have in the background, you can only get that via OpenSea. Uh, and then we currently have season one, we call Saga. Um, and Sega Saga is still mintable, right? Um, if you were to mint it, if it's a if it's a moment of history that's related to you, like we call it personal history. We give it discount, and and if it's not related to you, we call it historic. We we have a general price, a flat price for that. Um, but once Saga sells out, uh, we're going to be working on the next season, which. I'm not going to reveal to, until we formalize some more of the details, but I'm very excited. But yeah, so every season comes with themes, right? So season zero is called Genesis. So it was a little bit more open-ended. It was just, this is Hash. And then Saga, Our this season is about personal history. So we really invest a lot of time into how do we make personal history collectible. Um, and then season, the next season will be about some other theme. Um, um, and, and it's our way of kind of providing fresh uh ideas to the community um, um and also to reward people to mint early because if you mint the genesis piece the genesis piece is like a og artwork now compared to a saga piece right and they they fetch a higher value um, on the secondary markets very interesting because when i minted this one i minted two other ones i minted <laughs> a badger dow genesis transaction or something maybe they're like i guess where the treasury the first transaction yep. from the treasury something like that and i also minted one from the day that i got married oh that's awesome see so <laughs> so you already had i already had that idea i guess you tapped into that somehow you realize that there's two different types of things going on here there's people that have yeah history is personal and also kind of cultural yeah absolutely yeah and, and um yeah, and that's what Saga was meant to be, right? Um, we have this uh, automatically curated gallery that we kind of have, we call it like the Spotify year in review, but for crypto. Um, it's You can go on the explore page, it's called My Saga, and you put in your trans your address and we go out and say, this is your first transaction. This is your first uh, Uniswap trade. This is your first OpenSea trade, right? And and that's just like a, like a pseudo automatic way for us to, just give you your history and, and um, you know, you can just see it, right? You can view it as a gallery or if anything really stands out, you can obviously mint it. Um, but yeah, yeah, we put a lot of love because we realized um, in Genesis that history is not just meant to be historic. It's meant to be emotional, personal, right? So um, we wanted Saga to really serve that purpose. Um, and hopefully we did a good job at least. That's at least that's what I think the community has responded fairly well to. Um, so yeah, that's Saga and, and next season will be really cool. I'm very excited for that once we're really getting, once we were actually working on it. Um, 
and then starting to reveal some details about season two afterwards. Um, and eventually, oh, I don't know what the other seasons afterwards are. We'll, we'll, we'll do this season by season. <laughs> Very cool. So what, let's transition to London. What is the, what is the theme behind this project? Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of implied already in the name, London really is a project about celebrating the hard work that recently occurred. About two weeks ago, if I remember, August 5th, 6th, um, we wanted to create a project, um, you know, that creates history that remembers history in a different way. That was kind of the general theme around London. Uh, we had a great project in the form of Hash that was a camcorder, it records history, uh, but we wanted a project that makes history as well. So we wanted to really play on those two avenues. And that's what London was meant to do. That's what London set out to do. Um, so yeah, so London is a project uh, a social experiment is more a, a, an apt way to describe it that celebrates uh, EIP 1559, which radically changes how gas works in, on Ethereum blockchain. And, and it celebrates the hard fork indirectly because it celebrates you know, EIP 1559, which occurred with the hard fork. Um, so yeah, so to kind of go into more grimy details, uh, London is a ERC-20 token. Um, it currently governs a london dao that is just a community run grant giving dao that creates cool experiments artistic experiments um but yeah so how did you get london right so it was very interesting at least I, um you had to mint london um, um but you didn't have to pay me any money to mint london the only catch was you had to mint it at a very specific gas price right so um to hire the gas price you actually get like um, fewer amounts of London token. So you were actually incentivized to mint at lower gas prices, right? So it was, it was meant to de-incentivize gas wars. Like we wanted to create something that was like, hey, how do we play around with gas price in a way that makes people want to go the other way, not go up, go down with gas price. So um, if you minted at precisely 15.59 G way, if you set that in MetaMask, you would get exactly 15, uh, sorry, 1,559 London tokens. That's the most you can get in one transaction. So what was happening was a lot of people were intentionally setting the gas price to 15.59 G way um, to, you know, mint it at that specific number. And, and every time one of these transactions happens, you're adding to the history, right? You're, you're just, you were using gas price to make a statement, right? Um, which is very, unintuitive in our brain because we use gas price to get things in, but we don't think of it as a way to make a statement. Um, and that's what London started as, was just like, why don't we just make a lot of 15.59 transactions, right? Um, and, and it was really cool because uh, before London, there was only about, now I, I don't remember the accurate number anymore, but only about, uh, I want to say about a hundred transactions that were at about 15.59 G way, but after London as a project, now there's about uh, 20, 30,000. So you can imagine because of London, you know, we, we made a dent um, in the data on the blockchain. Um, and yeah. So with this London token, you, you you're going to wonder is like, when the hell is it used for? Um, um, right after hard fork, we dropped a NFT. Um, we call the London gift NFT and that's meant to be like, it's just a way to, to, to celebrate this whole experience. And, and you can mint it for exactly 1,559 G way. I'm sorry, not G way, London tokens. So um, everybody was preparing and holding their bags of London to mint this NFT. And, and we sold out very fast of that NFT. There was about 8,888 of them. Uh, for the first few hours of the London hard fork, we were the number one burners of uh, ETH because um, everybody was kind of trying to get the mint. So for three hours, I think we were number one above OpenSea, above Uniswap, with just the amount of ETH burnt. Um, and, and I do think we take the honor as, as a project of the very, very first EIP-1559 transaction. Um, that transaction is a hash already, an NFT, but also it's a approval of um, uh, of London 
to to move London, um, to move London um, transactions. So it's really it's really poetic that a project about London, uh, the Hard Fork, also makes history about London uh, right after it happens. So yeah, it's really just like a ceremonial project. It was meant to be. How do we make a, a, as much noise as we can in a crypto native way about this? very magical upgrade that's happening very soon. Well, um, very soon, uh, that already happened. Um, so yeah, that I, I feel like I'm gonna probably confuse people if I keep on talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <laughs> that makes sense. Very interesting. I like that a lot because also that incentivizing people to do a specific transaction and they probably won't do it any other situation. So you'll just see a huge clump right at the beginning. Yeah. Pretty, pretty interesting, pretty cool. Um, yeah. uh, how do you think about visualizing these things? Because you have to display them. They have to be you know, put in certain ways that you can digest them. You mentioned yeah. you have galleries on the website, but I mean, how do, you, how do you push the limits with that? Yeah, yeah. Um... There, there, there's so many avenues and so many facets. This is such a multivariate problem. Um, you know, once you take, uh, I can speak about this even on uh, at the artistic level, but like, like say for hash, right? A single hash tells history, but four hashes put together tells narrative, right? Um, if you have, so let's just say the DAO hack that happened um, uh, years ago, um, if you have one of the transactions related to DAO hack, you only own a sliver of it, right? But once you own all of it, you're really gonna have to, you're telling a deeper story there, right? So we as a studio, we're really interested in how do we build better narrative tools around uh, around spectacle like this, right? How do we tell very rich history that has time involved that had, you know, a before and an after? Um, that didn't just occur within one transaction. So, so how, how we tackle this is, you know, uh, we were hoping to do a copy book, but we're also hoping to do a, a metaverse museum and, and crypto voxels. We're gonna commission a great artist to create effectively a, a, a ETH museum of history um, um, and, and put a lot of great hashes in there to tell the narrative and really further that storytelling. Um, and, and there's, you know, we're really trying to push uh, uh, community folks to make Twitter threads to tell these serial stories. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of on that structure at a pers at a purely artistic level. Um, there's obviously a lot of things that we 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 try to be thoughtful of, but we all obviously also work with the constraint of abstract art, right? That um, does not have defined real forms. It's more just geom um, geometries that we interpret. Um, and so uh, with, ha with Hash, we, we were, we were, I was very keen to make pieces that had a very uh, painterly experience that felt like oil, that felt like paintings. And I think Saga really is emblematic of that because I was very inspired by uh, different forms of like uh, American uh, paintings back in um, the, uh, this is my American education failing me, but the romantic like uh, a manifest destiny era where there's very beautiful paintings of the nature you saw in, in America. I was very inspired by Asian uh, uh, watercolor paintings and I just love these landscapes, right? And then I really wanted to emote that. The saga was this, the sensation of just, just painterliness. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way. And that was my way of, artistically trying to paint history. Um, um, and obviously um, it's subjective if I succeeded in my goal. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope, hope that I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a difficult thing to do because we're kind of half in half out right now. We're not totally digital. Mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of half in, I feel like we'll over time we'll move towards more digital. And it will just be obvious how all these things will just be around us more naturally, but maybe the technology isn't there. Because even if you want to display just any NFT in your house, you could buy a frame, yeah. but I don't know how popular that is or, you know. Yeah, I, I know some great companies, you know, doing that and people buying like Samsung TVs, frame TVs to do that. Um, we still have some ways to go um, to make that 
a little bit more approachable. Um, but yeah, I'm very bullish at the NFT space. We'll um, create some good products on that front. <laughs> Speaking of the NFT space, what are your thoughts on the recent market? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I wouldn't be doing my job if I said I'm not happy about a bullish movement in the NFT space. Um, I do think if we're not already seeing it, a correction in place um, happening with the price floors of some amount of NFTs as as we're realizing that there's just a, a sheer quantity of projects that is kind of outstripping the, the, the I think the available demand for them. Um, and, and, um, and I think that's just a natural reality of just, just the, like the heat, you know, the, the expand shrink cycle of any business, I think, or industry. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, both the growth uh, of the, all the price forward and, the, and then eventually the correction, I think both provides a great amount of learning as an industry. Um, I think, you know, just seeing CryptoPunks, Bored Apes just, just, just rise, it was, I think, great to see and seeing their, and I really liked the Bored Apes community. Um, I personally am uh, a Bored Ape. Uh, uh, I own, you know, one of their uh, NFTs and, and I'm very happy to see that. Um, and obviously once, you know, there's too much growth, you eventually have projects that um, leave a little less to be desired in the community. And that's kind of where you see those corrections happen. Um, but the fact that these are happening, the fact that the NFT space isn't just like stagnating on, on just like, oh, we have this amount of users. We're not having bull cycles. We're not even having bear cycles. We're just staying here. It's, it's good to see people care enough to see these movements. Um, I think it's worse if we don't see those at all as a space. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm very still bullish and, and, um, you kind of have to be, I guess, because I work in this space. Um, um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I know that some people will have some say some things to say about the generative like avatars, 10K, whatever project space. Um, I mean, I know that as a studio, we're not too interested in that uh, field. Uh, we're more or less kind of just doing our, carving our own existence. Um, we're not even that similar to art blocks, but you know, we're, we're just we're, we're just we're just us doing our own little thing about history. But I, I do think there's a lot of great things is actually good innovation happening in the avatar space i think you know the innovations we're doing about community and how do we value community how do we the price discover nfts uh, um, are all great things also we're learning you know uh, how do we protect ourselves from projects that are more nefarious uh, in nature and more meant to take money from you than, than to really give you a wealth generating asset um and yeah and i always think back to how the generative art of uh, avatars are like um first person shooter game genre uh, um you know when, when it just started it was very primitive um, um in nature it was it wasn't very i guess i mean if you were to play like halo what is it combat evolved it, it feels very clumsy uh, compared to modern first person shooters like call of duty um and i think that because the genre is so financially successful, we have innovated so much in that domain, uh, right? And I feel like you play any modern first person shooter, there's so much uh, uh, innovate, like just intuitive UX built in, movement control. And we're seeing that with the generative art um, avatar spaces. The early things, I think like CryptoPunks are very uh, primitive in nature, but as we're progressing, we're seeing some very interesting experiments. And I do believe these will bear fruit uh, longer term too uh new ideas and, and and more talented people joining our industry so yeah <laughs> are there any projects that you like that you're particularly excited about other than pov obviously? yeah yeah um I'm, I'm i've been a very bullish um fan of hash masks um i know that they're Price performance hasn't been, I guess, to, to speed the, some of these more recently crazy projects, but I just think that they're very historic um, in, in how much they contributed to this whole NFT spring summer movement. I think they were one of the OG projects. I think their team is amazing, um, and, and I own a lot of those NFTs. 
Um, I've been a big fan of Cool Cats, um, just because I I just kind of like the more approachable nature, cool, what Cool Cats has going on, and, and I love the community and how much uh, uh, fan art there is. I love how the community almost owns this this, this great uh, IP effectively. Um, I own a board ape. Um, I love their community and just how uh, tribal it is sometimes, <laughs> both good and bad. Um, and and um, I, I followed Art Block from the beginning. Uh, shout out to ETH Block Art as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I own some other random stuff, but like um, mainly, I, I, I'm a big fan. Like, I'm very picky about what I what I buy, um, avatars wise, but. Um, I'm a big fan of cool cats and hash masks. Um, those really kind of hit home for me. <laughs> Where does this interest in history come from? Yeah, I mean, I, I've always enjoyed history. Um, younger, um, read a lot about, you know, I was, a, I was really interested in war history. I read a lot about World War II. I, um, you know, American history related to the Civil War and its build up. I just really enjoyed that. Um, I think history tells so much about us as as a race, about our culture, about what we can and can't do, and our aspirations. Um, and you know, the crypto space moves at like a, at a pace that is nearly impossible to record sometimes like go on crypto twitter and it feels like there's something new every every few hours um um it moves at some amount of speed so i i just saw it as an opportunity to manifest my personal appreciation of history um and more importantly appreciation of artistic history you know i think um you know how we remember history is through art right like um i think a lot of people can think of the french revolution through its oil paintings that we saw in high school or whatever we can remember world war ii through its war photography the vietnam war through war photography uh, um we these things create some deep emotions right like even with the recent you know uh, uh, issues with Af afghanistan it's it's people remembering via the helicopter and, and how it reminds them of the Vietnam um, evacuation, right? Um, like pictures, art depicts strong emotions. Um, and, and I think that's very powerful. It teaches us the lessons of, of, of days old and, and, and um, reminds us of, of, of how fallible we are, I think as well. So that's why I wanted to create a project that captured the, the worst and best part of crypto history. Um, and that's hash, right? Um, and eventually that, you know, this meditation on history turned into also London. So one is like, well, we got to create history as well. And then, so, yeah. I like it. Very deep, very <laughs> philosophical. I love that approach. <laughs> it's coming from a very yeah. um, personal place, I think, that you really want to express. You want to find a way to demonstrate this history the history of crypto which we all yeah if you're listening to this you definitely love crypto because i certainly do and this guy right here certainly does i could tell <laughs> how do you feel that you've done in that in it's a big task how, to represent something that maybe you love so much you participate in how do you feel you've done in representing it through this work yeah i mean um I, I think we're on the right track. Um, and, and, um, and I say that more or less in respect to the community than, than more to my own work. I, I think hash as a project is a blank canvas. Um, it's, it started with nothing, right? It had no history minted and, and eventually people came together to find what was worth minting. Right. So I created a blank canvas and then the community gave it meaning. Um, so, in respect to the community, I feel like it's it's doing what it was meant to do, which is uh, find a way to make being an archaeologist in this digital world feasible, uh, make it fun, make it something that you can find other community members to participate in. And, and I think Hash did, did its job in that sense. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that I would have done differently if you 
put me way back in the beginning of this year. Um, but we got to a great place and there's more to grow. There's more to tell and more stories to capture. But I think we're in a great place to do it. We're in an amazing position to do that. Um, and I think that's me more speaking highly on the community than, than what we did as a studio. Um, and I think London and, and that community also is so emblematic of, of the power of crypto native um, community building. Uh, those guys are, 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 you know, came for the history that was made and they were part of the history that was made. And now they're, how do we continue this history, right? And, and um, I think, yeah, just speak highly again about the community. That's really awesome to see. And London, again, was just another blank canvas that we produced and, and people gave it meaning, right? People made it his, historic. Um, and I like to believe that's, and just on that uh, measurement, um, these projects have done what they wanted to do. And um, we have a lot more gas in the tank as a studio to do more interesting experiments afterwards. <laughs> how much, how do you approach community building? Yeah, that's been a thing. Um, I wouldn't say in confidence I'm great at. Um, that's been something that um, if somebody's within the community is good at, I, 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 I do my best to learn from him or her. Um, and and we're very fortunate to have some great community folks that um, came from other crypto communities that are very passionate uh, folks in that community. And they came back, came to us and, and brought their learnings and experience and lessons. Um, and I've been learning from them a lot on just how to do this. And, and so my large approach has been just maintaining the organic nature of this project um, um, and, and finding ways to empower certain community members to take the next step and, and give them roles, give them ownership through some of the things. So that's why we created these DAOs um, for each project. Uh, we That's why we're finding ways to say, hey, like, how do we give you ownership over the stories you want to tell and stuff like that. So there's more work to be done, but... Um, I think we've been taking a much more like community signaling approach, uh, what the community wants. And I've been very, I've been doing my part, hopefully that to, to be part of that community, to be there on, um, at a day-to-day -day level and, and kind of understand the frustrations yeah. and, and whatever they have with, with areas of the project and, and what we can build, what we can roadmap for each of these projects. So yeah, I mean, it's something I, I'm learning, and then it's coming from an engineer who who, who writes code. You know, um, it's been a very new experience. <laughs> Throughout this whole process, what do you? What is the one thing that's that you learned that stands out to you as? Yeah, um, building things in the NFT space, and I think even the crypto space at large. Um, you having the emotional strength to get through some of the highs and lows is, is it, it, it comes from community. Like it's, you know, like the next day, you know, another avatar project blows up and you're sitting there as like, well, I, you know, we, we as a studio busted our butts for 40, 60 hours a week building this. And, and, you know, you're like, well, why didn't we get the attention? Right. But then as a studio, we have to keep coming back to the statements. Like, our day will come, right? Uh, um, uh, we're doing some good stuff here, and I think people will see the value. People will see this community and see the value in it, right? And, and I know plenty of other artists that, um, and I think this is a very raw part of doing artistry that you know when your work doesn't get recognized, it sometimes is very frustrating, right? Um, and and so yeah, it's kind of like taking it day by day sometimes, and and. Um, building stuff and recognizing the progress you've already made, right? Um, and then pretty much like I tell, you know, internally, it's like our biggest strategy as a studio is literally just, we gotta be there two years from now. If we can, if we can be there and be a solvent studio and we still have a community, like we'll, re we'll start to reap the benefits. We don't wanna not be there and see the benefits of our work our, um, and see what, what, what has transpired, right? So, um, having that longer term, I guess, ambition, which 
seems a little ironic in a space that is moving so fast and roadmaps are like uh, are set via the quarters and, and the next year and, and anonymous teams you know build something and moves on um and and so we see a very strong role in shepherding shepherding our projects um, and giving them the right um, future um, but that does also come with the reality of working you know quietly sometimes um, and, and that's yeah i mean that's something that we all got to learn but you know uh i've definitely signed up for the fast track <laughs> in crypto it's really hard sometimes to sit back and focus on the thing that you're working on yeah. especially in an environment where things are just booming all around you you're saying oh you're comparing yourself what did i do wrong what did i do yeah. how can i what am i missing maybe i should just like try to jump in over here and i definitely feel i feel that i mean i think that everyone who's involved in crypto feels that i mean mm -hmm. but um that's that's part of the challenge. I think that's part of the industry. Absolutely. There's no way to avoid, you know, a token going up a thousand percent in three days, right? So you're like, yeah. damn it, god damn it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you just gotta you gotta dig deep and you gotta go for the long haul. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Words and preaching to the gospel. <laughs> so what do you think is the best action for listeners of this conversation to take after hearing this talk? Um, yeah, I mean, on the shilly side, I mean, obviously, I, I would, I'm not urging people to blindly buy into our projects, but more so to just just experience what we are. Um, go to our Twitter at P, Proof Beauty P R F R F beauty um, um, and, and just kind of follow us because we're retweeting a lot of the great stories people are telling via hash. And, and maybe this compels you to say, I want to have my own part of history, right? Or you see people doing crazy fun stuff with London and maybe that compels you to own a London uh, or London gift. Uh, um, we just, just, I've been really kind of just clear to a lot of people. So you give, give us an opportunity to share what we have uh, to offer to you. And, and that's all we're, all I'm asking really <laughs> is, Give us an opportunity to show you some of the cool and fun stuff we're doing and it's not like other projects where you just hit a mint button and then voila you get an nft it's some more complexity to it but if you have the patience to some of our complexity um i think you'll be very bullish on on the fun you can have in this in our projects um and yeah that's kind of what i would ask of, of the viewers uh, um you know in respect to proof of beauty um, i think in an nft space at large you know, we're, we're due for correction, we're due for a bullish run, whatever you want to say. It's, um, we're still very early in this space and there's so much we still have to figure out about the nuances of this business. Um, and yeah, like, you know, um, I hope that this has made generational wealth for some of you guys. And, and I also hope that it didn't damage your, your overall portfolio because you, you know, got rug pulled by a certain NFT project. Um, but, you know, like the space is very adversarial sometimes, but I think if you really look at it at its core, there's something, there's a huge movement happening and, and um, don't leave it. Um, um, don't leave this movement. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, David, thank you very much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And looking forward to uh, more works from the studio. Yeah. <laughs> Give us some time. We'll, we'll, we're a little short on time, but we'll do it. <laughs>